Did you message me about something? I don't believe so. All right, it might be someone else then. I might be mixing you up with someone. Yes, yes. Okay, guys, I mean, I was actually going to look for some Muslims to ask some questions to, so I might as well ask you guys questions. Yeah, I'm just, uh, these okay. are Christians. These are Christians. I apologize. I, I associated you with your company. <laughs> yeah. No, they were, they were having a conversation with me earlier. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so so let, let, me, let me ask you this question. Let's try and have a, an intelligent conversation, Obi. Peace be with you. Let, let's try and have an intelligent conversation. We can try. Right. The story of the seven sleepers, where's that from? The seven sleepers? Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry. No, 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 don't, don't, don't hey, let him into it. Oh, we're having a conversation. He, he, he's not Muslim. I'm, I'm he's an apostate. He's an apostate. He left Islam. Yeah. He's a, no, are you Muslim? Lucas just wanting attention. Lucas just wanting attention. I'm not trying to be Lucas just wanting attention. The guy's emotionally immature. He just wants attention. This guy's scared. The thing is, the thing is. I've seen this saga before, by the way. I know, right? I know, right? I've seen this saga a few times. Three times. Let, 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 go on, Obi. So my question to you is, the story of the seven sleepers, where, where's that from? You're asking me, where, where do we get that story from? Where do you get that story? As a story? Muslim? Yeah. From the Quran. Okay. Right. And hadith literature as well. Right. Where, the story of the Queen of Sheba visiting Solomon, where do you get that from? That would also be in the same, same, same corpus. Okay. What about the story of Christ turning the, the clay uh, birds into real birds? And speaking as an infant from the womb, uh, from the being a baby. Same corpus. Okay, so you, you, the, the thing is, Obi has now made a claim that all of these stories are coming from the Quran for Muslims. No, I said corpus. So yeah, that, that includes corpus. Also our, our, okay, our, I'll accept hadiths as well, right? Not just hadith, but yeah. tafsir as well. Okay, tafsir too, tafsir too. However, all of those stories predate all of these Islamic texts. I knew that was coming. Yeah, all of them. All of them are stories that Muhammad would have had access to. That Muhammad, thank you very much. If you could hold that, that would be great. Here, yeah. All of all of these stories are, are stories that Muhammad would have had access to. If you need to hand over the Bible, just give it to him. Yeah. All of these stories are stories that Muhammad would have had access to. And I, for one, one of the reasons why I reject Islam. What, why do you think he would have had access to that? Right. I'll tell What's you why. Evidence for him yeah. Okay. Islam? Okay. So here's my evidence. Right. Point one. Point one. Muhammad was a traveller and he had an interest in religion. He had an in, even before he re, became a prophet, he had interest in religion. He would go away to the caves, he would pray, he would think. In the cave? Yeah, yeah. He would cave, go, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. He had an interest in religion. He traveled around Syria on trading parties for his wife Khadija, all before his prophethood. So what was he doing on those trade parties? He, he, he was trading on behalf of his trading, wife. Trading, not, not yes. learning anything. No, 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 that's your claim. That's your that's assertion. That's your claim as well. No, no, no. Making no. As well. The thing is, if he's going and trading in Syria, which is predominantly Christian, he's going to be talking to Christians. A man who's interested in religion, he's going to talk about religion. That's why we're all here talking about religion. We've come all from our homes to the one place in London where you can talk about religion all day. People do that. Muhammad would have done that. Fine. So he spoke with Syrian Christians. The story of the, the seven sleepers was a popular story amongst Christians in Syria. The Based story, the, I'll come to that. We'll come to all your evidence points. The story of the the story of the king you know the the christ child speaking from the womb and turning these clay pots these were stories known Gospel in Thomas. the region and well, we're going to come to that we'll come to the evidence obi you know me yes, you know me i haven't i haven't i haven't come I'm, i will come to you with it right so the point is also so that's point one that's how he could have gained access to these stories <laughs> point two he had Christian slaves that he spoke with about matters of religion and learned from, according to your sources. Two, th three. He had, he, I'm going to come to all the evidence. Well, I hope we'll so. Yeah, we'll come to all the evidence. Three. Muhammad and the first Muslims lived in Medina amongst Jews. Medina, and he traveled as well, and or would have traded with Jews. And those stories that we find in the Quran would have been popularized amongst Jews and were popularized amongst Jews. All of these stories are centuries before Muhammad, 
Which stories were popularised by the Jews? Which stories are you referring to? Of, uh, the, of the ones you provided? Which yeah, wait, well, I've given examples. Okay, but you didn't say which one would be popular. Okay, you've just given me popularised about Jesus and Jews don't believe in okay. Jesus. Okay, no, no, no. I, I got also talked about Solomon and Queen oh, Sheba. Yes, that's, right. that's right. You did. Yeah, yeah. you did. Thank you, you very did. much. Now, how, how do you popularise? Some it's dropped. Okay. Still got the how, how, stuff. Yeah. How do you popularise something back in the seventh century? Or before the seventh century, you don't have internet, you don't have video cameras, you don't have, you don't have um, what anything, right? You don't have anything that we use at this moment in time, right? All that you've got, the way you popularise something is you write about it, you write a book about it, and every one of these stories was written about before Muhammad's time. Every one of these stories is incorporated into the Quran, and the Quran states to Muhammad, he states. On multiple occasions, the accusation coming back against Muhammad is the idea that we've heard these stories before. These are the stories of the ancients. What stories are they talking about? That's my question to you. What stories, when these Muslim, when these Arab pagan critics of Muhammad are saying, uh, like, uh, we've heard these stories before, what stories are they referring to? Could be many different stories. Could be many different Aside stories. The ones you've already provided, it could be many. Yes. So. It seemed, would, you, would you agree with me that it seems fair and logical that if the Quran makes a statement that you should affirm it, right? So let, let's just, me or? Let, yeah, let, let's just be clear. We'll go, we'll go through, we'll do this systematically, point by point. You, you've spoken a lot, Bob, to be honest with you. Well, I invited you to speak. You did. I asked you a question. Yeah, you did. Okay, so how would you, can, can how would you like to, so, so fair enough, how would you like to reply to my initial statement? Well, I don't want there to be a massive monologue where I give, uh, try and get 20 seconds in and you interrupt me constantly. Well, you didn't interrupt me, so I have no reason to interrupt you. Well, that's, that's the, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad we established that then. Yeah? So, you want to provide your evidence first? Okay, okay, let's go through. So, these are the sources that Muhammad borrowed from. The stories that Muhammad would have gained access to. So, the, in terms, now, in terms of, um, Surah, Surah 532, do you know what that's about? Surah 532, enlighten me. Okay. Sounds like so, Surah Nejim. What, go on, what's it say? I, no, I, I, I'm, I said right. the chapter, I don't know, I don't know that. Access to those books. Okay, I'll go to that then. I'll go to that then. Yep. They want, they want, they want. I'm sure he can stand up for himself. Okay. They want evidence. They want evidence. That's fine. Let's look at the evidence. I know he's heckling, but he, he is right, and I did not obviously mention this to you before. Show us the Hebrew book. using Wikipedia, bro. Okay. It's not Wikipedia. It's not Wikipedia. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, the argument that I'm making, ladies and gentlemen, is not the argument of some street gangster. It's an academic argument being made by academics. Julian Decanu, um, who specializes in Syriac traditions, is someone who is making exactly the point that I'm making. That Muhammad, that Muhammad, had access to these stories and that he used them, what evidence ladies and gentlemen. What evidence is used to make that let me let me quote to you. He wants evidence. My first layer of evidence is academic evidence. That counts as evidence, does it not? I want to know what evidence he's used. Yes, I'm going to come to that. Going to come to that. Going to come to that. Okay. So, who's Zayed bin? Who is uh, Zayed bin Amir? You tell me. He's a companion of the Prophet. Okay. Do you doubt that? Not yet. Okay. Zayed bin Amir was a companion of the Prophet. This is what Sahih al-Bukhari says about him. Allah's Apostle said that he met Zayed bin Amir Nufal at a place near Balda. And this had happened before Allah's Apostle received the divine inspiration. Allah's Apostle presented a dish of meat 
that had been offered to him by the pagans, but Zaid bin Amir said, but Zaid refused to eat it and then said, I do not eat what you have slaughtered, what you slaughter on your stone altars, nor do I eat except that on which Allah's name has been mentioned on slaughtering. Now, Muslims believe that they should not eat something that isn't halal, something that the name has not been pronounced over, that Allah's name has not been pronounced over. This idea comes from a pagan. A pagan, before the founding of Islam, said that he would not eat meat unless it was slaughtered in the name of Allah. What do Muslims do, ladies and gentlemen? The hadiths are saying that Muhammad, before he became a prophet, met with this person and this person refused to eat meat, offered to pagan gods, refused to eat meat that the Bismillah had not been pronounced over. And surprise, surprise, this ends up being Muslim practice. That's from Sahih al-Bukhari 767407. And it was before Muhammad received his prophethood, before he became a prophet. Okay, respond to that one and I'll give you another one. Look, and by the way, you know what? I'm going to respond to everything that you gave. Yeah. Right? I have no problem with these stories being mentioned before Prophet Sallallahu and finding their way into the Quran. We as Muslims, we believe in a final dispensation. We believe that the previous scriptures, there is truth within them. However, there is a massive level of tahrif as well. Tahrif means corruption. Okay? So, if there are stories that were circulating in this area, right, and they found their way into the Quran, that was from revelation. Allah is con confirming information that yes was in circulation at the time in the Quran. It's, it's not a problem for us, Bob. We have we have similar things in our Quran that are that are found in your new, your new testament. That doesn't mean that you know it's, it's just been copied. It just means whatever you have in your new testament. Sorry, let me touch you. I don't want you to stab me with your umbrella or something. Okay, that doesn't mean right. That doesn't mean that it's wrong or false. It just means that little bit of the new testament that's in the Quran. Allah is confirming it. So just because the information exists doesn't mean it's false. Just because it didn't find its way into your canon doesn't mean it's false. Allah is correcting the, the tahrif of your scriptures and he is giving us the final dispensation of Islam. Does that make sense? Okay, I Thank understood you. 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 Now you let me reply. Me. Me. Now, now let me reply, ladies and gentlemen. The fact of the matter is, he's playing and hoping that you're ignorant of Islam. Yes. Because the fact it. is the Quran doesn't claim to correct any old story. The Quran claims to correct the previous revelations. None of the stories that I am saying that Muhammad borrowed and put into the Quran are found in previous revelations. I didn't hear anything. They are all dated. They are all. Are you going to interrupt me? Are we going no, to do go that? We're we going to do that silly game, continue, Obi, where you continue. do your pride thing yeah, yeah, and you try to be gangster. Oh, oh, you and then, you, you know, if we try that, oh, we try that, okay. we try that, we, we try. I remember you trying to be gangster and trying oh, to be intimidating. Yes, yes, yes. And I remember I'm, it I'm flopping. Sure everyone is a gangster, and I remember yes, it flopping terribly. Yes, yes, yes. So let's not do that game again. Okay. If you interrupt me less, I don't have to talk as much. But every time you interrupt me I have to remind you about basic manners yes before I could it's go just, on before I could go second, on to do the talk it's just so now no so now ladies and gentlemen and so now ladies and gentlemen so now ladies and gentlemen <laughs> I'll try to go back to the point that I made his argument that he thinks answers everything that I've said is not based on Islamic teaching the Quran does not state that it is a guardian over anybody's stories. The Quran states that it is a guardian over the previous scriptures. The previous scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, don't contain the stories that I'm referring to. Furthermore, all the stories that I'm referring to are, they emerge after the time of Jesus. They're all centuries after Jesus which means that they're centuries after the last prophet before Muhammad, which means that they were made up by just any old human being centuries after the last prophet before Muhammad. 
So his argument is not an Islamic argument. I challenge him to show me the verse in the Quran where it says that the Quran is the guardian of any old story. Oh, as opposed to being the guardian over previous revelations. I want to be clear. He might say, well, the previous revelations were corrupt and that's why they don't have those stories in them. But that ignores the point that these stories that I'm referring to come centuries after Jesus. So centuries elapse before anyone starts talking about these stories like the seven sleepers. The seven sleepers is dated to the time of, I think, Justinian. The Byzantine. Well, the Byzantine. Byzantine Empire, the Justinian Empire. That's centuries after Jesus. It's not even a biblical story and it can't be found before, nor can it actually have ever been before the time of uh, Jose uh, Justinian. And so I want you to show me in the Quran, please, where it says that the Quran is the guardian of just any old cultural story, as opposed to being the guardian of previous revelation. Okay. So, show me the. All, in the Quran, the Quran is mentioned as Al Muhaymin. What does Al Muhaymin mean, Bob? Your Arabic is fantastic, I'm sure. What's Al Muhaymin? I, I don't. I wouldn't hesitate to guess. Of course not. Al Muhaymin means an overseer. Of an overseer of revelation. Now, Bob, there you go, revelation. Okay, he's interrupting me. Uh. Oh, wait, oh, wait, uh -oh. oh, is that wrong? Is it wrong now? Is it wrong now? Okay, you done? We've done one for one. You're going to interrupt me again. Oh, one all, okay. Okay. So, when it comes, and Bob's making a terrible, terrible mistake here. Bob believes that the revelation, and this is, the, this is what all Christians mess up. He believes that the revelation is the gospels, the four gospels and revelations and everything that has no manuscript evidence for that comes much, much later. He believes those are the revelations that are mentioned in the Quran. The New Testament and the Old Testament, right, are not the revelations mentioned. It is the Injil, the Zabur and the Taurat. Okay, now I mentioned earlier, and this is why I'm going to get frustrated because I'm going to say the same question, the same arguments over and over. Quran says it's Al Muhaymin over the revelations, right? That does not mean these stories need to be found in his canon. The Quran does not mention anything about his canon. It mentions revelation and it gives the name of the revelation. That does not necessarily mean those are his books. We know that his New Testament is corrupt. We know that the Old Testament is corrupt. We know there are 400,000 variants in the New Testament. There are more variants in your New Testament than there are words. So we have very good evidence to believe your scriptures are corrupted. It doesn't matter if these stories that are found in traditions didn't make it into your book. Your book is false. Your book is corrupted. Your book means nothing to us. It is not the scriptures being mentioned in our Quran. I'm going to have to make this argument. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen, probably another three or four times during this interaction. Okay, on, right. So let me reply because Obi didn't, Obi didn't, Obi didn't listen, right? I already anticipated this answer. I haven't said that these need to be found in the New Testament. I accept he believes that they're corrupted. I accept that, despite the fact that the Quran never teaches that. And he can't show me any verse in the Quran that states categorically clearly the Injil is corrupted. He never makes that accusation. But notice what he did say. He said the Quran is the guardian of previous revelations. That's what he said. And that's what I said the Quran said. So thank you for agreeing me. I got that right. But, ladies and gentlemen, it was two centuries later, two centuries after Jesus, before anyone taught that Jesus turned clay birds into real birds. Two centuries after Jesus had died and rose again. No one had heard of this story before. No one had repeated this story before. It is something Gabriel Reynolds, an academic, because I'm mentioning academics to point out to you that this isn't just some, this isn't just some argument from some guy in speaker's corner. Academics are pointing this out to Muslims. Gabriel Reynolds says this, the miracle of Jesus creating birds from clay and his bringing it to life with his breath is known from the apocryphal childhood of the Savior a second century 
Anno Domini, that's 200 years after Jesus, a second century commonly and erroneously referred to as the infancy gospel of Thomas, which is what he called it. He called it the infancy gospel of Thomas, and that's an error. It's not called that. In the Christian context, the point is to have Jesus creating living beings in a way God creates. You see, the people that created the story about Jesus creating clay birds, they believed Jesus was God. They didn't believe that he was a man, and they believed that he was God on a mission from being a child. They were Gnostics, that's what academics call them. It's not a term that they would have known at the time, but it's what we call them today. And these Gnostics invented a gospel, a false gospel, that no one ever heard of, called the infancy gospel, the, child of, the childhood of the Saviour, in which they invented this story. So unless he's committed to the belief that 200 years after Jesus, there was another prophet that brought another revelation, there's no grounding to justify his belief that this was ever a story connected to Jesus Christ, ever. I am not arguing that this story has to be found in the Gospels. I'm arguing that it was invented centuries after Jesus, but centuries before Muhammad, and now finds itself in the Quran. So you need to listen to the argument, because you haven't actually answered it. Anyway, so Bob has made another blunder here. He believes the Gospel of Thomas, and he believes this Gabriel person, right? Gabriel then, Reynolds is an academic. Gabriel, Gabriel Reynolds, right? He believes him. It seems to be infallible. I didn't right? say that. He believes whatever this individual has said cannot possibly be wrong. He is a historian working on conjecture. Historians work on conjecture all the time. There is no evidence that the Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, are more voracious than the Gospel of Thomas. Just because it fits with his narrative, he believes that these must be canon and that one must not be. We know nothing about the people who wrote the Gospel of Thomas. The only thing we know about the authors of the Gospel of Thomas is what has been recorded in the polemical works of the early church fathers, a biased account on people who we know they hated. So we have no idea what the true beliefs, beliefs of the people who wrote maybe a redacted version of the Gospel of Thomas. We don't know. The Gospel of Thomas in itself is probably corrupted, just like his other Gospels. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't some element of truth in something being circulated at that time. Right? It doesn't mean just because this Gabriel person puts the Gospel of Thomas in the, what is it, you said 3rd century AD? 2nd right? century. Second, okay, I'm sorry, even better for me. Just because he's put it in the 2nd century AD doesn't necessarily mean 100% that this story never existed at the time uh, uh, after, after Christ or whatever, whatever you want to call him, Aesip and Maria, right? It doesn't mean that. It just means whatever stories that, the, that whoever canonized the, 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 the Gospels wanted to put in there is what was put in there, right? They didn't like that story for whatever reason, decided not to include it. Look at the Gospel of Mark. They didn't even include the whole thing in there. The entire ending, we know, was completely omitted. It's not there. The earliest manuscript ends with, and the women were scared, ran away and said nothing to no one. We know your scriptures are corrupted. We know that there can be things that are omitted. We know that it doesn't necessarily need to be in your canon in order for it to be right, in order for the Quran to be Muhammad over it. These things, these stories circulated, they could have been part of the actual endure that we believe in. Before you reply. Right? And that's going to be obviously what, what the Quran is Muhammad over, right? Illuminating the falsehood, of which we have much here, okay? And obviously, bringing to light what is truth, Muhammad, overseer, criteria over. The word is in the Quran. You can go ahead and look for it, Bob. I thought I gave you an Arabic la lesson last time I was here. It seems you've taken nothing on board. Go okay. on, Bob. Okay, just gonna wait for the batteries to change. Man. Three seconds. One. Seven like seconds later. <laughs> what is it, Muhammad? Overseer. Action. Okay.
Oh wait, you, so, you so, missed all that. So, so, no, 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 it was, it was, it was. So it was, cool, it was, man. No, it was on. It's okay, caught, it's okay. caught, it's caught, it's caught. You you were caught, you were caught. I was caught. Yeah. I was caught. So ah. ladies and gentlemen, let, let, let's just correct, let's just correct Obi on a couple of things. Please. I love firstly, firstly, ladies and gentlemen, the church fathers from the first century and the early second Some century are quoting. Can we time, this? Quoting, Can we time it? Um, two minutes? No, after my after Fine, from, no after problem, this. No problem. I'll quote. But I don't want you to go on for thirty minutes till, that, that, till judgment day. Obi, yeah? Obi, stop interrupting. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll time it afterwards, and we'll go backwards and forwards three right. minutes. Three How minutes. long did I take just right? now? About what? Wait, two, Obi, minutes? Obi. A couple minutes. Probably. I'm still going to finish my point, bro. These interruption we things. We might be here till you know. Are you ready? Hunker I'll down. Back to Birmingham, man. man up. It's only cold. You'll survive. You've got yeah, a hood, yeah. and you're wearing a ski mask. I am. Yes. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Right. So anyway. The fact of the matter is, Obi plays to tropes that are common amongst Muslims that aren't based in much fact. The reality is, all four of the Gospels are known and quoted by the Church Fathers from the first and early second century. Nobody is quoting or aware of the story of the infancy Gospel, of the infancy Gospel, until the second century, till into the second century. So the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, he says things like, well, you know, your, your text is corrupted. And we, he used the, long end, the absence of the long ending of Mark as an example of that. Well, I've got, I've got a really simple explanation for that. Papyri is a, a text that decays very easily. I mean, they're laughing, but the facts will support me. They say it's convenient, but the facts will support me. And the thing is, they just don't like but hearing facts that contradict their well, narrative. Now, notice he's not listening. Not yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. going to talk to you. Notice he's not listening. So I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> so papyri corrupts very easily. And I think, personally, the ending of Mark was lost because the ending of Mark would obviously be at the end. And so that part of the story was lost. That's my personal view. Some academics have different opinions about it. It's a debate. But it's not a problem for Christians. And shall I tell you why it's not a problem for Christians? Because the church was founded before any of the Gospels were written. The Gospels did not need to be there for the church to exist. So it isn't a knockout blow to the Christian religion to go, oh, your, your text has got problems with it. Because the reality is the church didn't need those texts to exist. It existed before those texts were written. So it's not the knockout blow Muslims think that it is. But ladies and gentlemen, right? The, the reality is, the reality is the Quran's got textual variants. The Quran's got textual versions. Versions that Muslims centuries later said, oh, well, they all go back to Muhammad. But the reality is they can't prove it. There's no textual evidence to support it. Now, let me just give you an example of how Muhammad could have got these stories. So this is coming from the life of Muhammad. Yeah. Written by Ibn Hashim, Hisham, yeah? This is what it says. According to my information, the apostle used Ibn often Hisham, Hisham. to sit at Al Marwa at the booth of a young Christian called Jabra, a slave of Al Hadrami. And they used to say, the one who teaches Muhammad, most of what he brings is Jabra, the Christian, the slave of B Al Hadrami. Now, Muslims often say to Christians when we point out the behavior of their prophet, like him marrying and having sex with a child, they say, well, why didn't the people at the time accuse Muhammad of this? Well, according to Ibn Hisham, the people at the time of Muhammad were accusing Muhammad of getting his stories from Christians. And that's not me saying that. That's a Muslim source saying that, used by Muslims in the mosque when they're teaching about Muhammad. They quote this book and the book is saying that people at the time of Muhammad were accusing Muhammad of getting it from a Christian slave. What's the book? The, the book I'll tell you what the book is. Yeah, I'm giving my sources because yeah, Obi please. did ask for sources. Please. Hey, so good. Right? Yes, please. Yes, please. Ibn yes, please. Ishaq's The Life oh. of Muhammad, Ibn Sirat Ibn Rasul Ibn Allah. Ibn right? <laughs> Page 180. That's, there you go, you've got my reference. So the fact of the matter is, Muslim sources are saying Muhammad was being accused of getting his sources from Christians. And Christians were aware of the stories that are now appearing in the Quran. I think that there's very good 
clear case that Muhammad was just borrowing other people's stories and sticking them in the Quran and calling it revelation from Allah. But the, the people of his time weren't fooled because the people in his time were saying to him, we've heard these stories before from the Christians that you're hearing them from. Go on. <laughs> that goes back, exactly. You should, you should recognize Revelation then. No? <laughs> goes back to the point that I've been making all night. But anyway, so, so there was uh, the argument that he gave, he gave, he gave so much. I'm trying to remember all of it. He gave the argument about um, uh, the mention that it wasn't mentioned by his early church fathers, the, the, the Gospel of uh, Thomas. Um, yeah, because that's not the canon that they wanted to go with. So obviously they're going to omit it. That is not a, an example of any sort of evidence. That just confirms the bias that we know would have existed with his early church fathers, who we know very well were very biased, and we have no manuscript evidence of anything they said until about a thousand years later during the medieval period. So. When it comes to this idea, get my water. again, I'm just going to reiterate it. He's using the same sort of argument that he could have picked it up somewhere. Again, the same argument is going to apply here. Nothing changes, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be found in his canon in order for it to be revelation, right? Allah says that his Quran, his Kalam, it is Muhammad over everything, any revelation not found, doesn't have to, sorry, doesn't necessarily need to be found in his scripture or what he believes to be canon today. He made a little dig at, you know, Prophet Sallallahu marriage. Um, again, there is a difference of opinion as to the age of Aisha. Um, and there's also countless examples of child marriage and child grape in the Old Testament, right? And so Bob needs to obviously defend the actions of his God. He believes that God in the Old Testament, right? It's the God of the New Testament. So if God of the Old Testament is giving commands to great children, then he needs to make an argument for why the pre-incarnate Jesus was wrong in what he said and why now the incarnate Jesus, who by the way is no better because we know he impregnated his own mother when she was 10 years old, according to the Petrovangelium of James, right? And essentially boys, to be honest with you, right? We know this is a fact, why? Because Mary, who was consecrated to the temple, she was, she was put given to the temple. Why did she have to leave the temple? And why was she promised in marriage to, jo to Joseph? Because she was about to menstruate. You can't be in the temple when you're about to menstruate, right? You have to leave. And when did she get pregnant? As soon as she left. So she hadn't even attained puberty yet, right? So if you want to discuss child marriage, Bob, sorry, didn't want you to take a swing at me. If you want to talk about child marriage, you're going to have to- You're not to, gangster uh, enough for me to take a swing at you, gonna, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not a You're gangster. not gangster I'm, enough. I'm, 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 fantastic, fantastic. There he is, he is, yeah. Only if people need it. Yeah, so if we look at your Old Testament, I'm almost, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. If we look at the Old Testament, we see your God is very happy with her, the daughter of Jacob, Dina, being not only raped by someone, grape, sorry, grape, I don't want you to get demonetized, Soko. I know you don't make too much, but you know what? Every little counts, right? So we want, we, he's not even upset about her being raped. In fact, he's happy for the one who graped his nine-year-old daughter to marry her as well. Are you done? To marry her as well, right? So if you if you want to talk about child marriage, get your facts right, Bob. Right. Okay. And maybe don't go too okay. far from Obi, home. Obi, and don't throw stones Obi, at the glass Obi, house. Obi, wait, Obi. Okay. So notice Obi's listen, running. You go Obi. one more time, and I'm, I'm done. All right. Yeah. Obi, Obi, I'll listen to you. I'm not sure. responding. Fair enough. Obi is running from the argument that I've made. Yeah. Let me just place the argument out very clearly. The Quran has stories that we can find predating the Quran. Those stories were permeated and popularized by Jews and Christians in the region that Muhammad moved in. Muhammad had Christian slaves. Muhammad interacted with Christian traders. Muhammad lived with Jews. Muhammad would have heard these stories. He had an interest in religion. He would have spoke to people and these stories were popularized. These stories then appear in the Quran and the Quran states, the Quran states, this is, this is what people were saying at the time of Muhammad. When our signs are rehearsed to them, they say, we have heard this before. If we wished, we could say words like these, these are nothing but tales of the ancients. So in the seventh century at the time of Muhammad, people were accusing Muhammad of copying other people's stories. We see other people's stories that we have evidence of where they come from, 
like the, 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 the infancy of the Saviour Gospel, in the Quran. Like, for instance, I'll just rattle off some quick other examples. Like, for example, compare Surah 532 to Mishnah Sanhedrin 4.5. Compare Surah 531 to the Targum of Jonathan ben Uzai. Compare Surah 27.16 to the Targum of Shia or Esther 1.1-3. 1, 1 Compare Surah 21.51 to the Midrash of Genesis 38.11-13. Incidentally, that ends up in the story about Adam and Eve. And in that story, the angels are commanded to bow down and worship Adam and Eve. The Quran has that story. The Quran is copying other people's stories. Let's go on. The, the story, we've talked about the, the pseudo-gospel of Matthew, the Domitian of Mary, compare those to Surahs 19 verses 29 and 22 to 26. Surah 2 verse 34, compare it to the life of Adam and Eve. Surah 3, 49 and 5, 110, compare to the childhood of the Saviour. These stories, by the way, are centuries after the last recognised Muslim prophet. They're centuries after Jesus. No one is saying any of these stories. We never have any evidence of them at all. And then they appear centuries later, but centuries before Muhammad, they get populated into a region that Muhammad moves, like the seven sleepers of Ephesus, and then they end up in the Quran. It's very clear what was happening. Muhammad was not a prophet. Muhammad was taking stories that other people heard, taking stories that he heard from Christian slaves, and then he was putting it into the Quran. He was copying pagan practices like not eating food that the Bismillah had not been pronounced over. This is quoting from their, um, their biography about Muhammad and their hadiths. So Muhammad is taking other people's things and incorporating them into Islam, but the Quran doesn't say that it is the guardian of anybody's story and anybody's practice. It's saying that it's the guardian of previous revelation. So those stories we should expect to see earlier than we do. That's the argument I'm making. Bob, let me go one more time and then you'll finish. Okay. One more time and then you'll finish, yeah? Because there was a point that you mentioned I just want to want to, want to respond to. So again, guys, uh, the problem is here, when it says revelation, it doesn't necessarily need to mean it's a story that's found in Bob's gospel. Okay? It can mean that there is, there, and to be honest, all the arguments he's just given actually prove to us that the existence of an Injil, right, in its infinite, that there was something there that all these stories that were in circulation, they found themselves in different places. However, the early church fathers, or whoever it was, arbitrarily canonized these, these, these books, right? Rejecting some stories and accepting others, right? And I gave the example of Mark, and Bob did, to be fair to me, did come back with an argument about papyrus. I don't know that it's a strong argument, right? And I find it quite strange because according to John, and John actually, his name's John, all right? Bob John, right, will not disagree with me here. In John, Peter has a resurrection experience. He's there at the tomb. He sees the, 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 the risen Christ. And no, Mary, Mary Magdalene sees him, the demon-possessed prostitute. But also John has a resurrection experience. He's at the tomb. He sees an empty tomb. I find it quite striking that when we go to the Gospel of Mark, we know who's the author. It's not Mark, by the way. Mark's just a translator for who, Bob? You can answer that. Peter. Peter! Oh my goodness! He's a translator for Peter. And you're telling me, how convenient, you're telling me that the ending of Mark, the crux of Christianity, by the way that Paul puts it, is the resurrection. It's not even about the cross. Paul puts everything on the resurrection. And Peter omits that story? and the women were scared, ran away, and said nothing to no one? Your stories are corrupted. Your stories don't even have the, 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 the narrative that you wanted to have, right? We know there were additions. We know there's omissions. We know there's 400,000 variants between your manuscripts. We know your scriptures cannot be trusted. And as far as uh, Ibn Ishaq goes, the, the story that he mentioned, apologies guys, I can't remember every single thing he said. He, he's very good at the shotgun tactics, right? But according to Ibn, I mean, Ibn Ishaq, we don't see him really as even a canon. 
right? His works are not canon for us. What is canon for us? Quran, six books of hadith, right? The canonical books of hadith, right? The most two important, Bukhari and Muslim. Show me this story in Bukhari and Muslim, Bob. Or will you only go to the sealed nectar of Ibn Ishaq, who we know was only a historian and not even that great of a muhaddith? Can I reply? What's the choice going to be, Bob? Can I reply? I'm going to go. Okay, I'm going to. I'm gonna, I am going to watch. I, oh, fair enough. You can hear the reply. Do you want to like, get a picture together? If you want to, because we love each other. Yeah, I love him. He hates no, me. No, no. I love him. Wait, he hates wait, me. Wait, is the picture a lie? Is the picture <laughs> no, no. picture a lie? Done. Okay, all right. I don't love. I don't hate you. No, so no, now no. let me let me reply to Obi's points very Hello. briefly. Let me, let me reply to Obi's points very very briefly, right. very right. clearly, right? Obi, yeah. what Obi didn't tell you is that Ibn Ishaq predates Sahih al Bukhari. He didn't tell you that. He didn't tell you that the, 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 the biography of Muhammad is an earlier source than. What? What? Oh. Sorry, we'll see you Okay. <laughs> Two and three quarters. Two and three quarters and a fifth. Two three quarters and a seventh. Are we ready? So he didn't tell you that Sahih al Bukhari is predated by Ibn Ishaq. An historian wants the earliest sources. Sahih al Bukhari comes centuries after Muhammad. And when you study the methodologies of how Muslims believe that their hadiths came to them, it's a complete joke. They accept some hadiths that in, in some, in, they accept as hadiths in, in some uh, methodologies about how ha rely the reliability and the grading of the reliability. They accept that they come from children. But then they say that children can't have the license to repeat hadiths in another understanding of how hadiths come to us. I'm going to do a presentation on that later. But, uh, well, not tonight, another time. But Ibn Ishaq is stating that Muhammad was accused of hearing the stories from Christians. That's an early Muslim source. The Quran is stating that people were accusing Muhammad of repeating stories that they've heard. It seems fair if the Quran is making that statement, and that's a 7th century document, that we should be able to find what stories are they referring to? What stories have they heard before? And we can find them. And I've mentioned the sources of those stories. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, if Muhammad was simply copying other people's stories and other people's practices, he's not the prophet that he claims to be. And let's be clear, these stories are not dated to the time of the prophets. They're dated to the time between Isa and Muhammad. They come after Isa and they come before Muhammad and they were popularized before Muhammad was born. And so Muhammad heard the stories on his trips. He heard the stories from his Christian uncle. He heard the stories from his Christian slaves. And then he repeats the stories, puts them in the Quran. And then the pagans in Mecca go, well, we've heard these stories before. And that's what's happening. Okay. Any questions before I go? I'll take a couple of questions. Yeah, um, so as it relates to Surah Rasulullah, Ibn Ishaq's account, is that the same with the satanic verses? That's valid as well. I'm sorry? Like you see the satanic verses yes. in um, the life of the Prophet by Ibn Ishaq yes. as well. Yes. They often say that that was a fabrication. So um, what is your response to that? My, my response is as a historian would respond. When I want to look into history, and I am actually a historian, I studied history. It, it's connected to the study of religion. I also did it for A-levels. Um, it doesn't make me a historian, but I've studied it. Yeah. But when you're a historian, what you're looking for is you're looking for early sources independent sources, sources that are embarrassing, yeah. right? You're looking for sources that have outside corroboration. Let me give you some examples. The idea that Muhammad married a child and had sex with a child, that's embarrassing today, right? Was it embarrassing at the time? Probably not, okay? But it's embarrassing today, the, the, but it's not early. There's a, a hadith about a, uh, an eclipse that occurred at the time of Muhammad. Yeah. 
Well, I've gone onto the NASA website to see if there was an eclipse at that time. And there was, so there was outside corroborating evidence to that uh, event. You're looking for early sources, you're looking for independent sources, and you're looking for sources that, that might say things that are considered embarrassing. Okay? And the real, so for instance, the fact that Mohammed had lots of wives, that would have been an embarrassing thing in a, in a Christian context. So John of Damascus, he criticizes Mohammed for having lots of wives, because that would have been embarrassing in that context. It's a sign that he didn't lack self con he lacked, he lacked self control. So that's what you're looking for as a historian. And, and Ibn Hishak has, um, he has stories that he's got from other people. So he's collecting stories, so they're independent. And he's putting them into his biography. And in his biography, he's writing down things that Muslims now find embarrassing, like the satanic verses. And so because the satanic verses were embarrassing to Muslims at the time, because it kind of contradicted the idea that Muhammad was hearing from God, it's actually more likely to be a true story. Because why would people remember it? Why would people repeat it? Why would Muslims repeat it? When it was an embarrassing story for Muhammad from a Muslim perspective. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's early and embarrassing. Um, and, and it uh, probably has come to Ibn Ishaq independently. Yeah, exactly. And Ibn Tamir agrees with that as well. Ibn Tamir also repeats the story as well, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that means now you've got independent early sources repeating the same thing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tom. Yeah. yeah. I'll take another question before I go. You got, you got a question? All right. Okay. I got one question. You can ask off camera and I can answer on camera. Is that all right? Or is it a private one? It's more private personal one yeah, yeah, yeah. all right okay okay in that case guys i'm going to wrap up get a stop so god bless you all if you want to walk with me bro we can walk anyone who wants to join me for a coffee we're going to go and grab a coffee yeah what my concluding words are that the evidence is clear Mohammed was borrowing stories that he got from his surrounding culture and surrounding society and we can trace the origins of those stories and they're not connected to any prophets so they're not connected to any revelation because we know where they can be found we know where they emerge from and they're late and they're from groups that even Muslims wouldn't recognize as reliable like the Gnostics Muslims don't agree with the Gnostics but yet they've got Gnostic stories in the Quran